What's up everybody? I've been up literally all night, all night making this video for you because I wanted to make sure I could get it out today. So let's hope I do that. But anyway, uh, y'all have been asking me about research and I figured what better way to get research advice than to go straight to the source and ask a Nobel Prize winner. That's exactly what I did. I caught up with Randy Sheckman, 2013 Nobel Laureate in Physiology and Medicine. I asked him about his research life, his research experiences, what made him successful, what he looks for in a student, and hopefully this is helpful for you guys because I honestly just did it because I wanted to learn from him and I, at the same time I was like, why not record this? for you guys. So I recorded it and hopefully you find some meaning out of it. If not, I'll try to make a separate research video later on. But until then, enjoy Randy Sheckman. He is amazing and I hope you guys learn from him. And yes, the audio does have a bit of background noise. I'm sorry. Still getting used to this whole editing thing, but hopefully you still enjoy the video. Let's go. I am here with Dr. Randy Sheckman. For those of you who don't know, he's done so much work, won like pretty much every award there is, including the 2013 Nobel Prize. Fantastic. Um, some of the stuff he's done, uh, just to break it down, he actually come, uh, discovered a lot of stuff that was involved in the Golgi vesicle trafficking pathway, a lot of genetics, and a lot of cell biology. So we'll talk a bit more about that as we go forward. But thank you so much for meeting with me. It's an incredible honor. So one of the things that you guys might not know about Dr. Sheckman is that he's involved in cell biology. So cell biology is concerned with uh, biology at the cellular level. Can you tell me a bit about how you got into that field? When I came uh, to Berkeley in 1976, I decided to launch my career studying how proteins move uh, from within these cells to outside of the cell, and mm -hmm. how that's linked to the growth of the membrane that surrounds the cell. That's mm -hmm. uh, called the secretory pathway. The yeah. outline of that pathway <clears throat> had been established in mammalian cells by uh, electron microscopy and cell fractionation, or your isolate membranes. But no one had any idea in the 1970s how that process worked at a molecular level. There was no mechanistic understanding of that. Mm -hmm. Within 10 years of starting this project, we had developed a biochemical way mm -hmm. of understanding the process by breaking cells open mm -hmm. and reconstituting in vitro <clears throat> the movement of proteins between organelles with using broken membranes and cytosol from, from, uh, from yeast cells. And we've spent many years since then studying this process in yeast, but actually most recently for the last dozen years or more, studying this process in mammalian cells. Oh, it's wow. the same pathway, but there are certain... Um, interesting disease things that affect the proteins that we discovered in these. Mm -hmm. Fantastic. Yeah. Uh, I think one of the things I struggle with on a daily basis, and I look up to people like you and professors all the time, and I'm sure a lot of people watching this struggle with, is learning how to feel passionate about certain aspects. Medicine, I guess I have to pick a path and, and be like, oh, this is what I really want to do. Yeah. For you, it's even more difficult because I think you're focusing on such a specific aspect. That's you like the Golgi, or, or in this case, mm -hmm. like particular cell biology. Mm -hmm. So what exactly drives you? What, what drove you to be so passionate about it? Where did that passion mm -hmm. come from? Well, um, I think you have to pick an ambitious goal, mm -hmm. something that other people have not done, okay. and systematically attack and, and keep focused on solving the big picture. You have to be excited by the question that you pose, mm -hmm. and then I feel you have to maintain uh, a sharp focus on that big picture and all everything you, that you do from now until you solve that problem uh, should be directed towards solving that problem and if, if that's your mindset it's very easy to find lots of interesting things to do okay I like that I like that uh, another thing that I often also struggle with is um, focusing on in this case like Doing research in undergrad, at least here at Berkeley, was really difficult initially because there's a very steep learning curve. You know, like yeah. learning basic science research, yeah. which includes PCR, qPCR, fluoroscopy, all this stuff. That that's just your toolkit. Just learning the yeah. toolkit itself is hard. Yeah. And that too, now you have to try to get successful in the experiments. Yeah. So, as a Nobel laureate and someone who's been doing this for years and years and years, I want you to think back to how you started, mm -hmm. and I want you to. If there is something that potentially helped you yeah. learn these techniques, because yeah. I know undergrads even here at Berkeley, yeah. they come into a lab and they're flustered. Learning a new technique is no big deal. I mean, somebody's there in the lab to show you how to do it. Mm -hmm. So most undergraduates are working along with a graduate student or a postdoctoral fellow, or in the case of a young faculty member directly with that faculty member, and they're they acquired the skills and uh, 
it's their job to teach you. Mm -hmm. So you're saying finding good mentors was definitely yeah, yeah, for you? Yeah, absolutely. Okay. Yeah, I had the, uh, the advantage as an undergraduate to work in a lab with a beginning assistant professor who was you know, doing experiments himself. Oh. And was happy to show me how, how to do it. And so getting good mentors early on, obviously a very yeah. big part of this, and obviously uh, being able to ask questions. Uh, okay, so last two questions. One of them is about the importance of basic science research. Mm -hmm. A lot of, in general, not even just people watching this, uh, want to see some sort of application to research. Yeah. You know, whether that be you know curing thalassemia or curing A, B, or C. Yeah. Uh, one of the things I've learned from Berkeley uh, is the importance of basic science research. That is the importance of asking questions that may not necessarily have this end goal of curing a disease, but help you find out more about these general mechanistic pathways that can be yeah. applied. Yeah. Uh, so what do you have to say about the importance of basic science research as someone who has contributed to it? Well, it, it's an easy, an easy sell. Uh, my feeling is that when you make a fundamental discovery, there are going to be people who have practical orientation who will exploit it mm -hmm. for good purposes. My work... Uh, yeah, I was going to bring up your Okay, work. well, my work, you know, we were only interested in basic mechanistic understanding of this process. And that, of the secretion of the... Yeah, yeah, identifying the genes and proteins required mm -hmm. and how it works. And uh, early on, when we found that yeast cells have a pathway that's essentially the same as human cells, the biotechnology industry was growing up in the Bay Area. Mm -hmm. And uh, they brought me in as a consultant, and <laughs> they were able to engineer the secretion of, of human proteins. Uh, for oh, instance, wow. uh, if they engineered the uh, gene for human insulin, mm -hmm. they could program the yeast cell to produce huge quantities. Now, one-third of the world's supply of human recombinant insulin is made by secretion of yeast. And that was basic science, so understanding how the that process the, works. The application of basic science. Yeah. yeah. What you said and stuff that I've heard over also adds, my, adds motivation to my time in lab. Uh -huh. That actually was something I picked up near the end of my time here, but it was actually something that made me feel a lot more like, oh, this stuff that I'm doing can have massive implications. And even if it doesn't, there is a certain aspect of uh, curiosity yeah, that, it, that yeah. you should invoke. Well, that, that's that's what satisfied me all along, <laughs> yeah. just the curiosity. <laughs> exactly. But then with experience, the, the, the certain knowledge that, if you, as I said, you make a fundamental discovery, it will have practical Patience. applications. You know. Fantastic. Okay. And obviously, as someone who is a PI, and obviously students want to get into your lab, and even labs in general. What is something that you look for in students? What I tell people is you got to do some homework. Mm -hmm. um, read the, the um, home pages of the set of faculty online, mm -hmm. and read in some depth about what they're doing. Mm -hmm. and go to them with some intelligent questions about their work, and maybe even some ideas of your own. Okay. Uh, and Last, I promise, last one. And this is just because I, you're such an accomplished person, and as someone who I want to learn a lot from, I think it's so important to not just focus on your successes, of which you've had so many, but also on the failures yeah. and what those taught you. Because yeah. I think you you probably learned a lot more from them than you did from your successes. Yeah. Uh, so can you give me a couple examples of failures? or even Well, you know, there are strategic uh, decisions that one makes that, in retrospect, were, were misplaced. Mm -hmm. uh, there were lost opportunities where I didn't pursue something that I could have easily done if I just spent things well. Okay. Uh, but, you know, looking back, I can't complain. Okay. Uh, <laughs> uh, things might have gone faster, um, but in, in the end, uh, things worked out. So um, I'm, I'm pretty happy with the way things have gone. So, <laughs> well, you got to know. <laughs> so, I mean, I, uh, uh, yeah, there's some, you know, there's some situations that arose in my dealing with people that are probably so effective. I think mm -hmm. I was, at first I was, um, you know, when you're trained as a research scientist, you're not really trained to, to, to work with people mm -hmm. so much, I mean, <laughs> other than, you know, as a colleague, yeah, yeah. not as a mentor. And um, I think when I was beginning assistant professor, I didn't handle that so well. Mm -hmm. kind of, I just had no experience. Yeah. I have more experience now, and I've developed my own style to to do it for most people out there as well. And um, if I had to do it over again, I, I would have handled things differently, but you know, it's part of growing up. Well, thank you so much. Sure. This has been enlightening. Okay, um, very good. Dr. Sheffman, everybody. <laughs> thank you again. Sure.
All right, thanks for watching that video. I've been way more active on Instagram recently, so please make sure you follow me on that. Snapchat, as usual, I'm always going crazy on both those uh, social media apps. So uh, like, comment, share, and subscribe. Add me on Snap, Insta, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace.